Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about a good friend of mine, Alexa, which I have to whisper, otherwise she will come running like a puppy, and specifically the Alexa Skill Builder Specialty Certification. You know what, it's getting annoying um, whispering this, so I'm going to refer to her as Alexandra from now, she doesn't seem to like that name. So, the Alexandra Skill Builder Specialty Certification. <laughs> start with the why. Um, there's really three reasons you could possibly want to get this certification, um, which is sort of fits in with the rest of the AWS certifications, but it's unique in that it doesn't really fit in the AWS ecosystem like all the others do. You end up using the Alexa consoles completely different. So for that reason, there's three situations in which you would want to get this. Number one, if you just think voice tech and Alexandra is cool or interesting or fun to work with, and you enjoy building Alexa skills or really anything else to do with that. Um, the second one is if you're just going for all of the certifications, so there's 12 that are active at the moment, and this is one of them. So if you wanna round off all of those certifications, which is what I'm trying to do, then this is just a box you're gonna to need to check. And then the third possibility, which is the rarest of the three, but also possible, is that you use Alexa at work, and you wanna get certified to verify that you know how to create Alexa skills um, for example, the team I work with at, at ANZ Bank, um, we have an Alexandra skill. I feel so dumb saying that. We have an Alexa skill um, for predicting house prices. So you can basically say to it, hey, Alexa, um, ask Realaz what um, this house and this address is going to go for, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm kind of in all three of these categories. Um, I think it's interesting. I want to get all the certs and I actually do work with it kind of at work, not that much. It's not been a project that I've specifically worked on, though I have sort of explored the code base a bit. Um, but yeah, uh, there's there's three reasons. And if you don't fit one of those, then there's really not much point getting this skill. Something else to point out as well, um, AWS is actually retiring this, um, did I say this skill? I meant certification. Um, AWS is actually re retiring this certification um, towards the mid to end of March, 23rd of March this year. So you've got just over two months to get it. So if you're hearing this now um, and you wanna get this cert or you wanna say you got all 12 AWS certs, um, then you're gonna need to do it before March. Um, luckily for you, it's a pretty easy exam. It's only gonna take a week or two of study and you'll be fine. Um, so let's talk about what you would need to study and, and the resources that I use, what I'd recommend, tips and tricks and so on. So to start with, resources I used. Um, there's a couple of courses out there on this. There's, there's one on ACloud Guru and there's one on Udemy. I go with the Udemy one. It's by Hussein Awad. And um, it's really pretty much everything you need to know for the exam. Pretty dense content, but it's also super short. It's like a six hour course. And you watch this, you follow the documentation, go and experiment on the Alexa console and you'll be fine. You'll, you'll pass the exam more, more likely than not. Um, other than that, uh, there's no tutorials, dojo, practice questions for this. So I go with the WizLabs one. I honestly can't remember if I paid for them or not, but they're not expensive. It was like 20 bucks maximum if I did pay. Otherwise, I just went with the free ones. I honestly can't remember um, because I did the practice questions and I was like, oh, this is pretty easy. Um, and then did the practice exam from AWS. Again, I was like, this is easy. Um, and then went for the actual certification. And luckily I didn't get shocked. Uh, there's a possibility that goes easy, easy, and then you do the real thing and it's super hard, uh, but not in this case, the actual certification. I sat down first five, five to 10 questions. I was like, oh, this is gonna be quick. Uh, I don't remember how long it took exactly, but I think it was like an hour. I had three hours to do the cert and it was like, it took about an hour to get all the questions done. So I wouldn't stress too hard about this cert. If you wanna get it, it's probably the easiest one other than Cloud Practitioner. Um, and in terms of what you need to know, let's talk about some of the topics. So this is gonna sound completely foreign if you've never worked with Alexa before. Um, but let's talk about the rules around invocation names. You need to know um, what you can and can't call your skill. Um, you also need to know how to make custom intents and how to use the built-in intents. Um, you need to know about dialogue delegation, automatic delegation and manual delegation and the differences between the two when you'd use each one. Um, you need to know about hosting your skill. Should you do it on Lambda, custom web endpoint, or should you um, get Alexa to host it for you? Um, know about the interfaces. So video interface, audio interface, display interface, things like that. Um, and then just a couple of things around sort of deploying your skill and, and getting it onto the marketplace. So beta testing, um, how many users can you have? How long can the beta test run for? Things like that. Can you do a beta test on a skill that's already live? Um, account linking, so what happens if you wanna get a user's address, for example, or if you wanna connect up to your own system, let's say you're Uber, and you wanna make people be able to order Ubers from Alexa, then what you need to do is 
you need to connect up the user's Uber account to their Alexa account. And the way that you do that is through the account linking. Um, then talk about in skill purchases. So allowing people to buy physical items or digital items in the skill. Um, and really that's pretty much it from content wise. Just follow the course I suggested Hussein Awad on Udemy and he covers all of this. So it's really everything you need to know. Um, read the docs if you're unsure about things and then just play around on the console. All right, end of video. Not quite, because I did want to talk about some tips and tricks, things you need to know. First one is you don't actually need an Alexa enabled device in order to pass the exam and learn everything you need to know. If you want to make skills and you want to you know, integrate with your home automation kits and things like that, then of course get one. Um, and if you already have one, then it'll be great to test on. But the device simulator in the console is pretty good. Um, so you don't really need one. Um, you can test everything you need to just there. And I don't have one and I pass fine. The other thing is about the level of general AWS knowledge that you need. So if you're coming from a completely non AWS background, um, then it might be helpful to do cloud practitioner or even solutions architect associate. I'd just recommend them in general. They're useful certifications and useful skills to have. Um, but if you have no knowledge at all, you might find it, you know, there's a bit of AWS knowledge you need there. You can pick that up from the course, but um, if you've done Cloud Practitioner, you'll be fine. If you've done Solutions Architect Associate, you'll be double fine. If you've done Solutions Architect Professional, you are overqualified for this certification, as I found. Uh, the kinds of questions that you will get about um, AWS in general, and as it relates to Alexa and, and the skills you build, but just more general AWS questions. For example, where would you host images for your skill? The questions will be pretty much Cloud Practitioner level. It'll, be, it'll say things like, your options for hosting the images. One of them is DynamoDB, one of them is RDS, one of them is IAM, which makes no sense at all. And then one of them is S3. And it's like, well, that's an easy decision there. Um, so that's the kind of level of general AWS knowledge you need. So if you have anything uh, cloud practitioner and up, you should be fine. Another tip is the options for speech synthesis. You should know them inside out. So that's things like choosing the poly voice that you wanna have, um, making the speech fast, slow, make it sound like a news presenter, uh, make it sound conversational, um, changing to a whisper and things like that. You can control all of that and you should know you're using SSML, so speech synthesis markup language, and you should know how to write all of those. It's all in the documentation. What I found was helpful was just grab a piece of paper and just write down all the different tags, what they do and all the options for them. Um, and then you probably remember it enough to, to be fine in the exam. Um, but yeah, that's something important because it's probably worth five or six marks on the exam, um, just things around the speech. Um, another tip, there was plenty of questions about analytics. Um, it's probably one of the areas I didn't really prepare for that much. I was like, there's only gonna be maximum a couple questions, but turns out there was heaps. Um, and so there'll be, how do you measure and track user retention? How do you see your usage of your skill week by week? Things like that. Um, and this is all available from like the analytics console. I haven't actually published the skill, so I never use that personally. I just watched the, you know, the instructors going through it. Um, again, as with all cases where I've lost marks, it's all come from not having that uh, hands-on experience. So learn from my mistakes, uh, do, do it hands-on if you have the time and, and the will to do it, to do that. Personally, this exam for me was, I don't wanna sound flippant about it, but you know, I wouldn't really be doing it unless I was going for all of the certs. Um, I have found it interesting, but it is kind of separate from the rest of the AWS ecosystem. So um, if it was not there, I probably wouldn't bother. Speaking of being not there, it's about to get retired. So in a couple of months time, this won't even be one that you can go for. So like I said, if you do wanna go for it, go for it now. The other thing that I wanna talk about as well is where I think voice technology is going. So if you notice, um, Siri's been out for a while, uh, Google Assistant's been out for a while as well. And then Alexa is somewhat new, but has also been you know, exi in existence for a few years. And I, I really think that broadly speaking, these, these voice assistants haven't really delivered on the promise of being a conversational AI assistant. So for example, um, so there's some recent breakthroughs with, with the Google Assistant where you can do things like, hey, can you call my sister and ask for this? And it will know from your contacts and it will go handle that call itself and then um, respond back to you. Or you can even make it do um, restaurant reservations for you. And I think that is really cool. That actually does sort of fit that being an assistant. Um, but I think broadly speaking, these AI um, assistants are very transactional. They're, they're all about ask me to do this, then I'll ask some follow-up questions. Once I've established everything, then I'll get done. And, and that's sort of how Alexa's built uh, using slots and intents and so on. It's all about accomplishing a task, which is useful. But I think in terms of um, becoming indistinguishable from a human, we're gonna need to uh, go beyond that. Um, 
Anyway, it's unrelated to the certification more or less. That's sort of where I think it's going though. I really would like to see the voice assistants developing a bit more uh, personality and, and ability to go off and do tasks for you without you necessarily being present. Um, and I'm not sure how Alexa's gonna do that without radically changing the way that it's built. My bets are probably on Google Assistant in that regard. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I want to talk about uh, before you go into the exam. Just follow that course, follow up all the topics I said, follow the tips um, and you should be sweet. Um, like I said, it's not a difficult exam. You can probably smash it out in a week or two. Let me know if you do that. Let me know if you found it harder than expected or easier than expected or just leave a comment below, add me on LinkedIn, up to you. And good luck everybody. And I will see you all in the next video.